Hey everyone, Logan here from Llama Index, back with the next video in our Bottoms Up Development series. Uh, so far we've covered customizing your LLM and loading in documents. And now we're at a good point where we can actually assemble a, a query engine very easily. Um, but in order to make improvements further down the line, we actually need to evaluate how that query engine is performing. So in this video, we're gonna kind of cover how to set up a baseline evaluation for your query engine. Now, evaluating an LLM application in general is pretty hard. Uh, you could have any kind of input. Uh, you can't really control what the output is going to be. It could be anything. Runtime uh, is a problem because you have to make many LLM calls and also API costs uh, in terms of actual money and just resource usage, depending on what LLMs or embeddings you're using. And so while solutions to these are still kind of in development, uh, Llama Index does provide some basic evaluation pipelines with more planned in the future. So right now, when you set up a query engine in Llama Index, obviously you have your query engine, you send your query to it, and then on the output, you get your response and sources. So using all three of these, we can actually evaluate how good that response was. And there's kind of two main ways of doing this right now. So first thing is you need a data set of questions to evaluate on. You could write this yourself, or you could use our data set generator to generate a data set of questions. Then using your questions that you have, you can evaluate both, did the response hallucinate? And then also did the response and the sources actually answer the query? So by looking at the response and the sources, we can kind of get a measure of hallucination. Uh, LLMs may make up information even when you're giving them the correct information. Uh, so we could kind of evaluate whether the response matches the sources by asking an LLM, or a smarter LLM. And same thing with the query. We can show another LLM the response in the query and basically figure out if that response actually answered that query. And that's pretty much it. I've got a notebook here set up to kind of guide us through this. Let's check it out. So we've got our notebook here for our evaluation baseline. Uh, as I've noted in the top here, we have two types of evaluators. We have our response source evaluator for measuring hallucination and our query response evaluator for evaluating if the response actually answered the query. Setting up is pretty simple. We just set up our API key. I'm going to append to my path so I can use the document loader that I created in the previous video. We can set up our kind of function here to help us load documents. You'll notice here that I'm excluding uh, certain keys from the LLM in the metadata. So for all these keys, I only want them to be used for embeddings or for retrieval. But when the LLM actually reads the text, it's going to ignore these. Again, I covered that in the previous video. I'm going to set that up. I'm going to load all our documents from the Llama Index documentation. We're going to set our service context. So we're going to use GPT 3.5, and I'm just going to set a global default here uh, so I don't have to worry about passing it in. Uh, next step here is kind of setting up all our indexes. I could have set up a helper function for this, but I just wrote it all out. Um, it just checks if the index actually exists in storage, and if not, it's going to create them. Uh, right now, I do actually have them already created. Scroll down here. So now we're going to set up our query engine. And for this particular task, you know, answering questions using multiple indexes, uh, I'm going to use a sub-question query engine. And what this means is that <clears throat> basically you'll ask a question. The LLM will look at all the indexes it has available and create sub-questions for those sub-indexes and then aggregate all the results and give a final answer. So to do this, we need a tool for each index and kind of a short little description about what that is. Now with the Llama Index documentation, this actually makes a lot of sense because we've divided our documentation into pretty clear uh, responsibilities, I would say. So we have kind of like a clear section for each piece of information. So we can set up those query engine tools. And then finally, we can set up our sub-question query engine. Uh, super simple. Just call from defaults, give it all the tools, off we go. And we could quickly test here uh, a quick test question. How do I install Llama Index? A super simple question. It should give us a reasonable answer here. Give it one second. Now, since it is calling multiple LLM calls, the response time is a bit slower. Uh, it was still not that bad. And we can see here that it correctly identified the steps to install Llama Index. So perfect. It, our query engine appears to be working.
But in order to get a fuller understanding of how it's actually working, we need to evaluate. So here I'm going to set up a sort of automated evaluation pipeline here where we're going to use GPT-4 to generate questions and then also evaluate responses. So I'm going to generate a data set here. I'm going to load all the documentation into just like a single document object. This will make the question generation a bit more efficient uh, because it'll be working with larger pieces of text, uh, you know, reducing the number of LLM calls that we have to call to generate our data set. And so here in Lamindex, we have this data set generator object where we just give it a list of documents, in this case, our one giant document, uh, and it will generate questions for the data that you give it. Now, I've customized the templates a little bit here um, to give it more context for the kinds of questions that should answer. Now, normally you don't have to do this, it's optional, um, but these two here are setting up the prompt template and then also the kind of instructions that I'm giving uh, to generate the questions. You know, I'm telling it that, you know, you're an evaluator for a search pipeline and it has to write questions using, you know, a provided documentation sample. And here I'm telling it to generate a single question. Uh, normally you could tell it to generate as many questions as you want uh, and it'll generate hopefully that number of questions per uh, document or per node. So we call generate questions from nodes. GPT-4 will generate those questions. This ended up generating about just over 100 questions, which was a bit too much. Um, for an evaluation pipeline, I think. Um, so I sampled randomly 40 of them uh, and then wrote them to disk so I don't have to call this function again. Uh, pretty simple. And down here we could take like a random sampling of five and you can see here that these are five questions that GPT-4 had written about the documentation. And it, they're good questions. You know, how can I convert tools to a LangChain tool? Uh, what is the function used to specify the vi metadata visible to the embedding model? you know, cover that last video, <laughs> very relevant. Um, so these, this looks like it's working properly. So now that we have our data set of questions, we have our query engine, we could just run the evaluation. So here I have set up a function, kind of helper function to run our queries over our data. So basically what we want to do is query our query engine with our questions, uh, keep track of all the responses and then send those responses to the evaluator. So here I'm kind of doing it asynchronously, but in order to avoid rate limits, uh, I'm doing it in batches. So in this case, I'm doing it in batches of five. I get my batch of questions. I run the queries, get the responses, and then we send the responses to the evaluator. Uh, and basically the evaluator will return yes or no. Um, you know, yes, this response is good or no, this response is bad. In this case, we're evaluating for hallucination in this step. So we're evaluating whether the response and the sources make sense together. You know, what did the response actually come from those sources? And to do this, we're just asking GPT-4 to evaluate yes or no. And this works surprisingly well. It may sound simplistic, uh, but it works well. It's just a little slow. Um, so we could get our results here. I put a little time.sleep at the end again to help with rate limits because we are making a lot of LLM calls here and you don't want to get stopped in the middle of uh, evaluation. And at the end here, we return the total correct and then just like a list of all the results, yes or no. So down here, we create the response evaluator object. We make sure that we give it our GPT-4 LLM service context. We run our evaluation and then here we print out how many uh, of the answers were hallucinated or not. And you can see at the end here, uh, 29 out of 40 questions were answered without hallucination, apparently. Um, that sounds not bad, uh, but it's good to like not take this at face value and actually look at, okay, now which questions were actually, like what kind of questions were causing problems essentially. So we can use NumPy to get uh, the, re basically we can use NumPy to get the questions where uh, the response or the result was zero or that, you know, GPT-4 was saying that the response was hallucinated. Uh, and we can see like a couple, a lot of good questions here actually, like what is the purpose of the guidance Pydanta program? Um, what is the purpose of the sub-question query engine? We're using it in this notebook. Uh, it's a good question. Um, and these are all questions that I think that the chatbot should be answering properly. Um, so we could kind of look at some of these questions and actually send them to the query engine and figure out why GPT-4 thinks that there's a hallucination. So we could send this first question here. What is the response? What is the purpose of the guidance pedantic program. 
Uh, and then we can get print the response along with the sources and we'll just see what that ends up looking like. Take a second to get the response. May as well run this other one underneath while I'm waiting. And the next question I'm gonna ask is, what is the purpose of the router query engine and how can it be used in a search pipeline? So again, two pretty good questions. Uh, and we're gonna see why GPT-4 thinks that these answers were hallucinated. So we've got our answer here. It says, based on the context information, there's no specific mention of the guidance pedantic program. Well, that is a lie <laughs> because that phrase and that class definitely appears in the documentation. We can look at the sources and we can see that it asked a question to one of the sub indexes. What is the purpose of the guidance pedantic program class? Uh, and it says here, the response says based on the information. So it's not finding the information. And then it also asked, how do I install and run llama index, which is okay. Uh, not a helpful question to ask, but that's the question it asked. It also asked what are the basic explanations of how llama index works. And again, that response isn't going to really help us find uh, the answer here. So we can kind of see that the answer here wasn't answered, but in this case, I don't know if I would call it a hallucination um, because it's literally repeating what this one source says. So yes and no, um, it's a hallucination, but it is a problematic question and that's good to know. Uh, the second question here, what is the purpose of the router query engine? Uh, router query engine and laminates program query transformations. Yeah, this is wrong. Uh, it's saying that the router query engine transforms a query into a single or multi-step process. Uh, but actually the router query engine just takes your query and decides which sub index to send it to. Uh, so this is completely hallucinated. And we can see here that this second, this first source here is the source of the hallucination. And then we can see on the bottom here, It did not provide any details about it. So I think the fact that the second one says that it could not find information about the router query engine uh, is telling GPT-4 that this answer maybe is not grounded in truth. And I, I would agree, this is a little bit of a, a confusing response and it is incorrect. So again, we found two questions where our pipeline is just not working, uh, which is great because that means we can figure out how to fix it later. And so this next section here is we're gonna evaluate answer quality, which is a bit different than uh, evaluating for hallucination. So in this case, we're gonna look at the response and sources together and see if they uh, satisfy the query. And again, we're just asking an LLM that kind of question. So we're showing this to GPT-4 and it's gonna return us yes or no. So again, I have a similar helper function. Uh, and again, we can set up our evaluator, except this time, instead of a response evaluator, we have a query response evaluator. Pass it our GPT-4 service context, uh, we call evaluate, and we can see that only 19 out of 40 questions were answered correctly, um, which is not great. Uh, <laughs> that even if some of these are false positives, um, you know, that's a good indication that there's a lot of room for improvement on our kind of baseline query engine. And again, we can look at which questions were <clears throat> answered incorrectly. Uh, some repeats here, actually, you know, we see this guidance pedantic program question come up again, uh, and a few other ones. Uh, one that I thought was interesting was, what is the purpose of the React agent and how can it be initialized with the other tools? Uh, I'm kind of curious why that one wasn't answered properly. We're gonna find out. And then the second one here, what is the purpose of the load and search tool spec uh, in the Llama index documentation? Again, it seems like an easy thing to answer. So it's a good thing to check in on. Here we see that it came back with a response. The purpose of the React agent is to instantiate an agent from a set of tools. So this isn't necessarily incorrect, but I think the fact that it didn't explain how it can be initialized. Like I think the fact that it didn't give an example uh, is telling GPT-4 that this wasn't totally satisfying the query, which makes sense. Uh, you know, if someone asks a question like this to our documentation, uh, our little chatbot should give an example of how to do it or otherwise it's not really helpful response. 
In this case, we have a response here, the loaded search tool spec allows users to Yeah, this answer also sounds correct to me. So this is a case of where GPT-4 uh, kind of falsely evaluated this. And like I said, again, this process isn't perfect, but it does give us, you know, many avenues to look into for improvements and then also figure out where our query engine is going wrong. So here in this case, I think it gives a good answer. We can see that the sources look good. It did ask the same question several times, which is, I'm thinking it just didn't know which sub index to send this question to, so it just sent it to a bunch. So that tells me this could be more efficient if our descriptions of our query tools uh, better represented the data that was in those tools. And that's pretty much it. We have our basic evaluation pipeline. We could come back to this as we develop our query pipeline further um, and make improvements. And hopefully we could come back and see that these questions that are getting answered incorrectly uh, do get answered correctly in the future. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.